This is the final video for uh, the Sonnet 116 by William Shakespeare. And as always, this is only a, a cut and dry question and answers. Um, so the first one is uh, the multiple choice, which is very elementary, but it also helps you to gauge how much you remember of the poem. So please try to uh, try to complete all of them. I will I will I will make more questions later on for your practice before your exams or whatever. And uh, but as of now, I've I've tried to cover the entire sonnet in some form. Some of them are thinking questions. Some of the figures of speech. So it is it is like a recap of all that you've understood of the poem. Now those are the ten multiple choice questions that I've put here. Uh, if we look at the if you look at question two, that is based on um, that is based on the reasoning question, and I have put one or two of them that will help you to think. You know, like if you look at the fifth one, true love is distinguished from fake love by. Now you might immediately think, you know, how do how what do we talk about it? And it's very simple. It is distinguished by resistance to change, and and it has the capacity to be timeless, capacity to endure, right? And that is the quality of love that. Shakespeare has spoken about, right? Um, the eighth one, the symbol of the sickle is used as, you know, the a sickle, that's a tool that is used, used for threshing the corn. So the symbol of the sickle is used as a tool by time, right? Uh, to transform the body with age and to make it barren. But love is unaffected by it and love uh, is, uh, I mean, is immune to this kind of a transformation. That's it, the reason. So I've just given you two examples just to give you a feel of how much you need to write. I'm sure you are aware of it by now. So let's look at the short answer questions. Um, simple, direct, choose any two symbols mentioned by the speaker and its significance in context of the poem. So I'm sure you're going in for the mark and the symbol of the mark and the symbol of the star, pole star and in connection with love. But keep it short. Remember five marks. So roughly between 50 to 70 words. Don't exceed that. Please, you will end up being repetitive. So don't do that. So look at the second question. How does the speaker justify what love is not in the first portrait? To focus on the first four lines, what love is not. Love is not weak. Love is not timid. Love is not shallow. It does not alter when people alter. It does not uh, vanish away when uh, time comes and takes everything away. So it does not um, uh, does not bow down to barriers. So very simple. You have your answer based on the first quatrain, right? The third one is draw up a sailor analogy. Uh, draw up the sailor analogy that the speaker talks about in context of love. I put the sailor analogy because of the ship and the pole star and the uh, ever fixed mark and the distance, the heights, the mystery of of love that is so constant, uh, like the pole star which remains at one fixed point, and that's a mystery of of astronomy of geography, right? So that is based on your the second quatrain. You will have the entire thing about. Um, the sailor analogy and then if you look at the fourth question I, I, I decided to phrase a bit differently how does the speaker go against the dictum that time and tide wait for no man so time and tide I deliberately use this because there is a lot of uh, water analogy here and time waits for no one yeah it waits for no one it annihilates everything it destroys everything that comes in its wake and time it doesn't allow anything to stay fixed in one place, but it is lost according to Shakespeare when it comes in this faced with love because love is not time's fool, right? It, uh, even if uh, time uh, plays its role in removing all the physical charm, the beauty that um, is so much associated with love, the real emotion is within. So even if people die and go away, love is eternal. We talk about love stories forever and ever, yes. So that's how you draw it up. And the last one is, how does the speaker use the hyperbole to defend the position about love? You concentrate on the last two lines where he's throwing a challenge. It's, 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 it's really a, a vow that you've made, a challenge that he's thrown, that if anybody can 
uh, challenge what he has spoken about love, about love being so constant and love being um, endless and everlasting. Uh, then he is never, if anybody can prove it wrong, that he's never, he's never been a writer. And uh, no man has ever loved a book. Well, it's a kind of a hyperbole, right? It is grandiose, a grandiose declaration. So that's your question. Remember, 50 to 70 words don't cross that. Otherwise, you'll be repeating yourself. If you look at the long question, remember, whenever you're framing a long question, base it on the words of the question asked. So Shakespeare, uh, sorry, sorry, tongue twister. Shakespeare makes a number of passionate claims about love in his sonnets. In his sonnet 116, justify this statement with suitable examples. So you're going to make a have a critical analysis of these passionate claims that he makes from not allowing impaired barriers to come in, not allowing time to destroy it, not a, it's being an ever fixed mark. It goes on till eternity. People, the body might will perish, but the soul, which which uh, is the abode of love, lives on. So these are the claims that he's made. And, and remember how, don't do a summary of it. Write your argument of why do you think love is it's a passionate claim, the first passionate claim. Give the example from the text, explain it. Then you move to the next one. So follow that point, uh, evidence, and explanation. That will be your analysis, right? Point, evidence, explanation. Point, evidence, explanation. Please follow that, right? If you look at the second question again, true love remains unchanged over time. How true is this statement in light of the summary? True love remains unchanged over time. Again, it's more or less the same kind of analysis, but you'll begin with how time is personified here, how um, the metaphor of love remains unchanged. So you begin with the time, but again, you analyze the entire aspect of a true love, right? The third one I wanted to put it slightly differently to challenge you to think if, uh, you know, like uh, Shakespeare has sort of challenged everyone with the couplet. I have challenged you all with the last question. Will you, his claims about love may be found wanting, may be found wanting is not, is not absolutely acceptable in light of them being plausible. That they really, can this really happen? Is this kind of love really possible? So, do you agree to this? You think this is possible? You are young people at heart, so I guess all of you will say, yes, it is possible. So, fine. Then analyze the poem on the basis of that. If there are some cynics among you who say this kind of love is not possible, why is it not possible? Because there's something from the poem that you believe that uh, Shakespeare said that this is not possible. Maybe the hyperbolic claim the hyperbole is something which is beyond beyond uh, acceptance, right? It's too tall uh, claim, right? Uh, so that very point itself can be the beginning of your argument as to why you feel that it is wanting. So I leave it to you to design it. It's always good to challenge yourself to do something different and to attempt something different and think about it. That's why I don't give answers. I discuss them. So you have matter with you. You have the explanation with you. So you have the long questions. You have the short questions. You have the reason questions. And then you have the multiple choice. And that will, this completes our sonnet work. So I've taken you to Bandle Church, Place of Hope, Worship, Faith, Love. I've taken you to Shantiniketan for Avishar. I'm moving to the next poem. But I am not <laughs> going to have any uh, any crazy backdrop this time. Uh, maybe in the quiet confines of my home, I will do the next poem. But I promise you, some point in time, I'll again take you to some exotic site, and I hope uh, you will like it. Uh, really, stay, stay safe, all of you. Enjoy the lovely spring in, uh, that is in the air. Yes, the cuckoo is singing. I wish we had a Wordsworthian poem to do next. But I'm not. I'm going to move to a hospital uh, kind of a scene. So see you all soon. Till then, stay safe. Take care. Bye.